Most recently, he served at Fort Monroe as the Deputy Commander and Chief of Staff of the Army's Accession Command, and he was, like you, a Marshall Award winner. Please welcome Brigadier General Crutchfield. Ooh. Thank you all. First of all, uh, General P, General Bartell. And it's always great to be around friends. Uh, General Bartell and I are, are great uh, friends and have served together. Uh, it's my honor to be here, sir. Thank you for having me. Uh, distinguished guests, but most importantly, all of you. Uh, I traveled here today to speak to you. And I hope that something that I say here in the next 10 minutes uh, or less uh, will, because uh, I know it's just after lunch, will uh, hit home. I'll start by saying this. In 1859, the great Blondin, who was, you know who the great Blondin was? You know who that was? That was the person that invented the High Wire Act. You know the tightrope? Well, he announced to the world that he was going to cross Niagara Falls yet again. He was going to do it on a tightrope. 5,000 people showed up to see him cross. Even the President of the United States was there. Halfway across, Blondin suddenly stopped. He steadied himself. You know how they do on the tightrope? He steadied himself. He did a backflip, and he landed squarely on the rope. Then he continued safely to the other side. And during that year, he crossed the falls again and again and again. Once he did it blindfolded, once he did it carrying a stove. I said a stove. <laughs> once he did it wrapped in chains, and once he did it on a bicycle. And just as he was about to begin yet another crossing, this time pushing a wheelbarrow, he turned to the crowd and shouted, who believes that I can safely cross this tightrope pushing this wheelbarrow? Guess what everybody did? They all raised their hand. They all believed it because they had all seen, it, seen him do it before. So he said, do you believe that I can cross pushing the wheelbarrow? And she said, yes, yes like she said. <laughs> and he said, you, do you, sir, believe that I can do this crossing? And he said, absolutely. That's what he said. That's what's in my notes. <laughs> Finally, yet again, he said, Cadet Foster, the person who General Crestfield ate your cake <laughs> by mistake. <laughs> Don't blame him. <laughs> Do you believe, Foster, that I can cross pushing this wheelbarrow? And guess what Foster said? He said, yes, sir. He said, yes. And then he said, OK, Foster, then you get in the wheelbarrow. Now, you just had a first-class education from a first-class university. Like the man in the crowd, you do know a lot of things. But also, like the man, there'll be times in your life when knowing things won't matter as much as how scary that situation may be. And when it happens, you'll have to decide whether or not to get into the wheelbarrow. You're about to join the ranks of the greatest army in the world. There's going, to be a, there's going to come a time in your Army career when, you're, or, when you are ordered to do something that you may not believe that you can do. To succeed in that situation, you're going to have to trust. You have to trust your instincts, in your training, in your education. And when that time comes, you will overcome your fear and you will get into that wheelbarrow. What I want you to do is look to the person to your left and right, right now. Look to your left, look to your right. These are the people that are going to be pushing the wheelbarrow. Okay, you hear me? The people to your left and right are going to be pushing the wheelbarrow. And you're going to have to trust in them. These are the soldiers who you will trust your life with, and they will trust yours in theirs. You know, in an era when too few citizens answer the call to service to community or to country, you have chosen to serve. You're doing so in a time of war. 
in a culture where so many chase the outward markers of success so that they can, uh, that often lead us astray like titles and status and materialism and money and fame and popularity and all the others, you have embraced the virtues that we need most right now, and that is self-discipline over self-interest. That is work over comfort and character over celebrity. After an era when so many institutions and individuals acted with such greed and such recklessness, it's no wonder that our military remains the most trusted in institution in our nation. 